We're joined now in studio by not one, but two very special guests, Ireland and Arsenal players. We've got Katie McCabe and Louise Quinn. Madden Watt, you're really welcome. Thanks a million for coming in to join us this morning. Ah, yeah, no problem. We're just Lights discussing, we came in on an air last night, we can't, obviously, we have to ask you the Arsenal game last night. Owen's already ripped it apart, so you guys can be more <laughs> polite. Were you having a peep at it? Yeah, I had a, I had a bit of a look at it and just, yeah, I think just going down to 10 men so early, um, just kind of made it really hard for us and then I think they kept trying to attack where they should have just you know tried to keep the score at 2-1 because I think if they bring that back to the Emirates not a problem but 3-1 is uh is uh proven difficult I think yeah but at the same time like could have been worse <laughs> <laughs> It would always be worse. <laughs> but like, it could have been, like as, as you mentioned there, like you were just saying off air about Niall Quinn's uh, different parish comment about Nacho Monreal. Like, it is beyond belief that there is a professional football outfit that at 2-1 down, they realise the way mm. the momentum is going. Like, I'm not sure if you've been in that situation where you realise the momentum is against you. There is a situation where damage limitation is such a big thing here. And I think <laughs> that's when you're just like, right, let's go, just stay compact and don't concede anymore. Yeah. Especially how tough it is away from home at times. It is all to play for now at the Emirates next, uh, next Thursday, I think it is. But... Um, I mean, it's Arsenal Football Club. They can they can turn it around. They uh, they have the players to do so. So hopefully they they get the job done next week. And that's something you yourselves have had, I suppose, experience with. Like as I've I've watched a lot of your home games when you're playing out in talent and stuff, and you were playing teams that were just brilliant teams, and you had to do that whole thing of do we need to sit back now? Do we need to protect? And once you had your break to try and try and make the most of it. It's very, very difficult when, you ha when you're when you an onslaught coming at you time after time after time. Mm. Yeah, no, definitely. I think uh, the Netherlands was a, mm. a, a big one for that. Uh, playing the European champions, obviously the, the calibre of players they have. So when we have to sit back in the fan, it's great having the likes of Leanne Kiernan, who's as fast as lightning to get on to the end of a ball. Um, but now it is difficult and it does require obviously a lot of con uh, concentration and stuff like that. But we we did it over there. <laughs> I think we've improved it the other day. So we were just mm. doing where we played Wales and a couple of friendlies. And in the second game, it was you know it was a I suppose a poor kind of first half from us. But they were just high pressing us. We had a lot of you know it was hard to get the ball under control. And you know but we you know we held on into the dressing room. And kind of one of the main things that we were happy about was that we didn't concede. And we we're like this is it. We kept ourselves in the game. Mm. That wasn't good enough. But we're still in it and then second half then we that was it we got control of the game dominated and then we you know we were able to win the game then so who scored Lou? <laughs> some tall centre back <laughs> <laughs> beauty <laughs> with the <laughs> uh, you know, Quinn on the end of it now yeah. Tyler put a great ball in obviously from a, from a yeah. set piece and that's that, that's the chances we get and the mm. chances we're going to get in, in the campaign whether it's a set piece or an in play goal and we have the, obviously the likes of Louise here to finish them off yeah. and the little tighter to, to put them on our head and so uh, no it was a great we showed great character in the, in the second half to obviously keep an ill in a half time put, uh, put what we done wrong forget about well not forget about it but and obviously put it right to, to get the 1-0 win That's how, some, oh sorry I'm not going to I was just going to say like, how big a, a focus is that now the campaign because it is still a bit away yet it is August I think before it actually kicks off mm -hmm. Germany are obviously going to be the ones that everybody's eyes on like is it then you're focusing on at the moment or is it more like Ukraine who might actually be yourselves against Ukraine for the second seed or am I completely writing you off already I, I think yeah obviously getting the, the Germans it doesn't scare me as much, obviously, because we played the, li the likes of the Netherlands and and, uh, and Norway in the in the last campaign. But yeah. with campaigns, it's pretty much take each game as it come. You can't underestimate anyone at, interna at international level. Um, so obviously, our opening game against Montenegro will be just as big as Germany in 2020 next year. Mm. Like, was there in a weird way a sense of hope after the Netherlands results last year, the Norway results? There were there were tight games like in. I guess looking back on them, there was a couple of moments where it could have turned a small bit, but ultimately, if you looked at those two teams, you're like, there's not that much of a gulf between these two sides, and it has been kind of a step up over the last couple of years. Yeah, I think just how, yeah, how organised we were able to mm. stay, and you know, at the at the same time, we we did create chances, especially in the second Norway game. You know, we actually kind of walked away from that being like we either could have drew it or we could have won it. We re like I we actually almost had Leans. Yeah. Leanne literally ran past mm. a good chunk of their defenders from our half and literally went one on one. Um, mm. So they, they're just the, the big moments that mm. can, can win our loser games. And we have a young squad. We are um, 
we are growing each each game and each camp, but um, hopefully now we'll we'll start the, the next camp. And you can see Colin Bell expecting it off you as well. Like it's not just they're out. He's mm -hmm. not expecting you to just show up. Like he really demands. You can tell. Like when we watch you guys train and in the, his post match interviews, you know he means it. Like when he says you're w you're well on your way. Like and you can tell he absolutely believes it because. We've all seen these coaches and these managers who say they believe it, but they don't. But you can tell with Colin, he really does. He's he's a he's a winner, and yeah. he's really instilled that in us. Because you know, sometimes we we definitely did go through. Where we were just like, ah, oh, that was close. You know, like a nice Irish thing. That was a good effort. Mm -hmm. We almost got there. You That'd know, be great. Yeah, yeah, to be as good oh, as that. Yeah, yeah like you know, oh, you can get them next time. Whereas in, he's like, no, you know, we've got to be doing better there, you've got to not just be like, oh, that was great. Be disappointed, take it, and then take it forward into into other games, because as we've shown, we we're, we're well able to keep ourselves in games and create chances, and he's definitely instilled that, you know, winning that winning, mentality, winning yeah. mentality all, the, all the time. How much does that come from, like, what you guys are bringing as well from an Arsenal perspective? Because you go back a couple of months ago, the treble was on the cards, and I'm sure there's still a bit of disappointment there, particularly around the League Cup final that ultimately they're the standards that you hold yourselves to and I know it's not <laughs> it's not based in Ireland though that set of standards but it doesn't help that there's an international uh, standard that is coming back home here and helping everybody come up a level. I think obviously the obviously ourselves the likes of Denise the the professional players bringing that mentality back in to the girls is, is great but in saying that obviously yeah we are doing well over in England at the minute but it's not to say our Irish based girls can't have that either which they do which is which is great for us um, but yeah it's it's a it's a it's a good one, obviously, for for us <laughs> being in the position we're in. Obviously, mm -hmm. at Arsenal, we've had a we've had a great season. I'm still gutted. I know you are too, yeah. Lou, about um, getting knocked out of the the FA Cup so early on, um, and then obviously the the cup final. We were <laughs> we were distraught over, but we still have the league to play for. We still have Champions League qualification um, to hopefully nail down and. Yeah. We've a, we've a big run in now of games in the, the next six six games. The league so. table actually up there now on the screen. And that's the thing, you're two points off Man City, am I right? But uh, they've got two games in hand, is that right? Mm -hmm. and yeah, we, we, yeah, we have two games in hand. Two games yeah, in hand, yeah. Because yeah. I was listening to Emma Hayes, she was speaking here earlier this week about her experiences in Chelsea and she was talking about how, you know, she's still... You know, it was a huge rivalry against Arsenal. She was talking about, you know, how the, the FA Super League has just gotten so competitive and she's really enjoying it. She goes, there's much more bite than there's ever been. Yeah. And she loves it for that. Mm. No, definitely. There's, there's, it's not just your your Arsenal, your Man City and your Chelsea's. Mm. It's a, a Reading can take points off teams like Birmingham. Birmingham are have doing, done so yeah, to us in the past, season. like mm. at really pinnacle times in the season. So it is ha having uh, having the qu every, uh, the quality and, and teams bringing in um, big players to the league. It's it's great and it's obviously pushing us as players too to perform week in week out. What do you think of the Casey Stoney project? That seems to be gathering traction. Man United. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's um, you know she's a formidable woman. Yeah, she was, and she was actually at like a you know a talk for the for the twenty by twenty, and you know was was speaking away, and she's I'd I'd never met her personally mm. before that I'd played against her a couple of times, um, and she's just you know so she was in the assistant coach role in England, and I think just to get this offer to go to United was, you know, one of the the best things she could do, and I think the the club from what I've heard have. You know, m maybe why it took so long for them to create a women's team, and you know, a lot of people were complaining and moaning, like, how can this big club not have a a women's team? They were literally just putting everything into place. They were getting everything right, setting it up, making sure that when they're doing it, they're doing it right. And you can see that that they have so far. And I think everything from facilities to the management then that they have got in. Yeah. So uh, yeah, she's. Uh, you can tell they're doing obviously great things as well. They're they're not obviously doing really well in the WSL two, mm -hmm. but they're challenging teams then in WSL one. Like they're beating teams mm -hmm. in WSL one. So you can only imagine then when they do obviously eventually <coughs> uh, come you feel up like into it's not the league. Take that long. Absolutely. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> so we we played them recently yeah. in um, in the Conti Cup. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was two one and. Mm. 
which is obviously them. <laughs> we don't want them scoring against us, but but um, no, they did they did well, and they have a great uh, great set of set of players there that can only bring the club forward in the future. Yeah, and obviously you're with Arsenal now. I'd imagine obviously the whole international team is there, but I'm sure right now your focus is very much on that Super League and getting over that disappointment of the last few weeks and reshaping and regearing. It can't be the easiest. No, it's obviously what's important now is to just stay fit, stay fit, and and on top of top of your game. Um, in these coming weeks, I think we've what three games in March now, Leo. And, yeah. um, they say March is obviously a big month because then, mm -hmm. even in the men's men's game too, um, obviously with Liverpool at the minute, Leo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, big Liverpool fan here. Oh um, really? <laughs> yeah, with Leo. Yeah. I just need to keep the bottle now. <laughs> Hold the nerve. <laughs> are, you, are you worried about their bottle as well? Because you know, there's lots of people saying, "Don't be at, don't be at Liverpool." They're not nervous. It's just no team can stay wonderful throughout a whole season. It's just a glitch. But people say, "There's no. yeah, definitely a couple of results you can look at where they got like some draws, like you know, Everton, United. You can kind of take that, but it's West just Ham as it well, was the West it, yeah. Ham and uh, Leicester. Leicester. Mm. That's where you just like. That's where you should be. You know, just taking taking the points there. But I don't know, maybe they'll kind of enjoy it now that they have a little bit of a chase. Because mm. I just, you know, they're not entirely used to being in this position in the last few years either, so. Um, but you yourselves, no, no, when I you're still, playing, do you prefer to be playing to be chasing something or do you prefer to be a bit comfortable? I think I'd like to be on top of the ladder. I think I'd like to have them two games in uh, hand played already and have the six points on top of, uh, of Man City going into, the, going into the end of the season. That's, for me, I'd rather that. Then, not to say like it's it's good to obviously uh, to be in the position we're in, um, but no, I think I'd uh, definitely have the six points tucked in. Mm. How sweet would it be to actually knock Manchester City off the perch, given what happened in the league final? I'm saying that with a big smile. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I'd, uh, yeah, I totally enjoy that. Um, I think it's just the way we started our season um, so well and. We have been unfortunate with, with long-term injuries to really key players in our squads, um, but now it would uh, it would be great to, yeah, to, to knock exactly. them off. Last game of the season as well. We played them at home. Yeah, so. May twelfth. Yeah, that's going to be incredible. You must absolutely hate the side of Manchester City now. That blue jersey must just give you some sort of nightmare. <laughs> just all over, coming at all angles. <laughs> Baby blue. No, don't like us. Uh, Katie, I must ask you because it's the first time we've had you in studio since, and you're probably sick of talking about it now. Is the, the assist in January, which uh, went viral uh, all around the world? I think at that point, because I think it was was it the same week that Messi did an incredible pass against Getafe or something, and it was like, who's actually done the best? Who's actually <laughs> who's done the best pass? Do you know um, what? When I because obviously we it was what one all, um, and yeah. it was Birmingham again. As I said, like they give you, especially us, a, a uh. really tough game any time we play them. So. I think we had in our head, oh, it's right, it's going to go into extra time here, like mm. we need to kind of really dig deep. I remember getting the ball off Leo. I think it was... Maybe, I don't you know. playing left side of centre-half? Maybe, yeah. Um, I just don't know. But I just seen the, like, the gap open up between Birmingham's right-back and, and right centre-half, and then obviously when you've uh, a player like Viv on the end of it, she, mm. she finishes it off, and I think you could see me sprint mm. then <laughs> about 100 miles an hour after it went in, but uh, no, it was great, it was a great end to the game, and... I think we'd, yeah, yeah, we yeah, deserve that was the, class. to get to. I don't, I don't think we kind of realised because we were, we were really pushing, you know, to, to kind of get forward and to, you know, try not make it go to, to, to extra, extra time. time. So we were like, oh yeah, Viv, like brilliant finish, and then we all come in the next day or that night, and we're like, Casey, that yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the camera angle, we kind of just didn't almost know it at the time. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, it was just like, oh yeah, great ball, but it was like. I just oh remember my head wasn't even. I didn't honestly care about the pass, but when Viv touched it wide of the keeper, oh, yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. "Oh my god, yeah. please just slot this in." <laughs> yeah. I, I thought she had went too wide, but she scored it in the end, and we went through. It's a lot worse people you could have on the end of a pass. Oh, exactly. It no, was. Uh, I think you know we hear people talking about like inch perfect. I think we have it up here now. It, it, it wasn't. It was better than inch perfect. It was millimeter perfect. <laughs> like, Look, there's me. Yeah. yeah, I was just <laughs> the fastest. Her, <laughs> G, her <laughs> GPS <laughs> went up then. <laughs> I was delighted. Um, oh. like, look at that p space. Like, it's just. I suppose that's the vision that footballers have that we normal people will never have. That you were there and you saw that space and you were like, I'm Only just going some to footballers, I don't see that. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, glasses on and everything, I can't see that. You can score ahead, I was like, can't see <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
Well, she has does have a vertical advantage on you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always call myself the vertically challenged. Like, but see, with your case, you, you may be more vertically challenged, but you can see the spaces and you go for it. Like, just that vision, that's something I can't even put into words, that people like you have just, it's not 3D, it's a different vision that you just, and it could have all gone so wrong, but it didn't. Yeah, no, I think it's, obviously, it's, Doing these things in training as well, like practicing what you're, go you're going to do on the weekend too. Like I, there was like, hey, cross some balls into me, will you? At the end of tr every training session, so she's heading them in, and then obviously when we're doing that at Arsenal together, and then she's scoring the winner against Wales, I'll, I'll happily cross as many balls as she wants <laughs> in, you know. So it is it's just putting it into practice on the on the training pitch, and um, yeah, and. Getting, getting wins like we did during the week, which is great. But it sounds like things as well. The manager is the type of fella who you try that sort of thing and he applauds you for it rather than trying something and if it doesn't come off, he's not going to give out to you for it. Yeah, he's a great guy, yeah, Joe, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, Really, really just, just very normal, do you know what I mean? And just wants us, yeah, to go and express ourselves. And yeah, you know, maybe if, if that pass didn't work out, you know, it, would, it just wouldn't have been too much of a problem. It was high up the pitch. It was, you know, this, that and the other. And he's just... Yeah, he just lets you like he he definitely has some some rules, style rules we have, you know, mm -hmm. that how he wants us wants us to play and you know, he's like if you execute all of these, you'll at least get like, you know, a six or seven out of ten about how you played. If you just if you just do that, do these basics that I want you to do. Um So it's not too rigid a philosophy then? Like we you know, we we know yeah, it's, I suppose it's not too rigid. We like to switch up formations in in a phase of play, yeah, you know, right. literally as we're going forward, we'll change formation. Then when we slip, like you know, slip back into defence, mm. again we're changed. So it's all, yeah. There's, it's, it's not rigid at all. You know, it's, it is. It's, it can be. It's very fluid. He does yeah. like even, and he leaves a lot up to us. Yeah, yeah. As well, and position wise, like he likes players being able to play in different positions and I think I've played nearly every <laughs> position. I was going to ask, what is your best season. position? Do you like yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I really don't know anymore. I played uh, the 10 <laughs> away with, with Ireland and I quite enjoyed that being higher up the pitch but that's the thing, Like I don't mind, I'll go in and do a job wherever um, wherever it may be. Sometimes it's beside Leo uh, as a left back yeah. and Leo, Leo hates me. <laughs> She's like, yeah, tuck in, tuck in. I know, uh, no, she keeps me on my toes when I have to oh play at the back. But, um, but that's probably your instinct kicking in because he, he seems I to just like going forward. forward yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Leo was uh, yeah. pulling me back. Oh, um, no, it's uh, it's it's great, and he has uh, we we've done really really well this season. Um, so we are just looking to to end things on a high and mm -hmm. hopefully uh, <coughs> go on and, and win the league. Uh, speaking about ending things on a high, I'm afraid we do have to wrap things up here. And we are, I know you, you yourself in particular, you've been very very. Uh, I'm losing all my words this morning. At least because I was listening to Jersey Boys last night. <laughs> but yeah, you've been very involved in the 20 by 20 campaign. So what do you think? How's it been going so far? Has it made a difference? I suppose most importantly, that's the big question, isn't it? Yeah, like, I think so. Like, from in terms of definitely social media coverage, you know, I, th I think it really has just kicked off every few pictures I'm seeing of just, you know, any sports people maybe that I know, they're all just getting involved and... You know, I have people coming up to me and saying they're doing all these initiatives now, especially in schools. And um, yeah, I just think I think it's even just it's in in the back of our minds now, or a bit more maybe in the front of our minds. But even just to put ourselves forward to be that role model, do you know, what I mean to we're we're getting opportunities, and you know, I like I definitely want all the girl the Irish girls to put themselves forward and you know be that role model and make themselves make themselves known because when you know it's when they're there people will it's possible like you, you're obviously doing it over in, in England at mm -hmm. the minute you've the girls here in Ireland you've Sarah Rowe representing over the other side of the world it's mm -hmm. so it is possible and I think it, the 2020 campaign is is to just show girls you can do it and you can you can be who you want to be whether mm -hmm. it's a like a player or a footballer and having role models like Louise and Sarah Rowe and yeah, it, it just shows okay. it possible. Yeah, but exactly, and Katie McCabe as well. <laughs> but I mean, no. <laughs> this is the thing though, I know sometimes people may not realise it, especially for you, because you guys have made it, but for, and b without, I suppose, really having any role, female role models growing up, in not, no, nothing huge compared to what girls have today, and it's still probably not enough. Yeah, and that's it, and it's just about putting, you know, putting them in, in show as the, you know, the, the hashtag is can't see it, can't be it. And I totally believe that. And, you know, there's kind of at the moment only, I think one athlete that really, really made made her own was Katie Taylor. Mm. 
you know, she really had no female boxers to be, but when she was a kid, she was saying, I'm going to win Olympic gold. And it's like, well, who was she maybe aspiring towards? And she was like, no, this is, this is what I, like, so she created her own role model. And I think <clears throat> then we're all just kind of, we're now following that, you know, that example. We exam all want to be boxers now, that, that. Yeah, <laughs> after that movie, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing with Katie Taylor. Like, not only is she inspiring, I think, girls to go into boxing, but boys, but I think she's also inspiring women in general oh, to yeah. take a step up and this is what you want to do, go get it. And she's epitome of, you don't have to be aggressive, you don't have to be pushy, you can make your way politely and diligently in this world by just following your focus. Mm -hmm. I think you'd know her better than I would in terms mm. of uh, her as a... As a quiet person, she's she doesn't. You would obviously know her. About yeah, you kind of just you know nailed it there. She's she does she just she knows she knows what she wants and you know whatever kind of way it takes her to get there, she'll get there. But for her, she's just she's just being herself. She's quietly going about you know about her training and about her way at times. And then when it's coming to these you know big fights and it's all about the you know you even see you're pushing the promotion. And you yeah. see all the the trash talk that the you know the other boxers are doing, and she's just like, let's just go. Yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you in the ring. It's mad, isn't it? That especially the way combat sports has gone, that somebody can actually stand out from the crowd by pure talent alone, because that seems to be the way that mm -hmm. it must actually be a real temptation for her to actually say, "Geez, I wonder what I actually be an even bigger profile if I started talking shy to my opponents." But uh, she actually hasn't. Yeah, that level. oh, I don't think that's appealing to her at yeah. all. Not at all. Oh no, she just she's she just shows and leads by example and that's you know that's just always kind of been her mentality just keep the head down do what i do mm. and then when it comes to the big stage i have no problem showing you what i'll do okay she's proven yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly she's proven it she's shown she can do it and she's come back from that olympic disappointment and rebuilt and to go come back bigger and better than ever like that takes huge character yeah no definitely we uh, we went as a team to watch the the movie in uh, the lighthouse wasn't it yeah lighthouse in the movie, yeah. we all came out inspired going into golf yeah. <laughs> we then had a katie taylor inspired meeting then yeah, we literally Colin, called a meeting yeah. and was like everyone just get a cup of tea we'll, like, we'll put a few biscuits out and we'll just literally just, just chat about it tell us about how that movie may impact you or how you you know how you felt and it was, you know, it was actually so really nice to listen to us. elements to the movies as well that a lot of us as players playing abroad can relate to as yeah. well. Obviously her her training, mm. her her talent itself, but little things like obviously her family. moving away from her family over to America to train with a new trainer. And yeah, it's obviously yeah. We, we, people, like a lot of player, like people that. and players and stuff can relate to that. So I think that's, yeah, it touches you in, in that sense. Mm -hmm. it, it was an incredible, like you mentioned, the, the camp over in Connecticut, the insight that you get into what actually makes a person tick in terms of how to get to the next level. I'm not sure, you, you, you were probably looking at the, the snowy landscape as some sort of <laughs> reminder of Sweden. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. sort of, I don't know what it is, what it, what it is about that sort of landscape where it's like person running in snowy surrounds yeah. always seems like they're going to a different level. Definitely, yeah. I used to watch the in the gym the cross-country skiers literally when I was in Sweden mm. and I was like what I'm doing I was like this is nowhere near as painful as what they do. <laughs> <laughs> that is like full body just oh it looks horrific so I yeah. just be like running away on your treadmill yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Well, look I'm afraid we're going to have to wrap things up here you can run away now and hear maybe do your cross -turn. listen thanks a million for coming in ladies no we problem really appreciate it just talking about Katie Taylor there and 20 by 20 we have a very special uh, episode of Dadcast coming up Dadcast for Daughters on OTB AM as Jer, Nathan, Adrian, Andy Lee and Kieran Donaghy as well, they sit down and chat about their hopes for their daughters in the future.